One of Jeremy Vine's cycling videos he posted yesterday has racked up over a million views, sparked a debate, divided opinion, and attracted an article in the Daily Mail. So I thought I would jump up and offer my views. But I'll say at the outset that this is one of those situations that I really don't think we should be debating at all. Allow me to explain. Even before I show you the video, and you can leave me your opinion down in the box below for what it's worth, but even before I show you the video, this was of a cycle lane definitively that Jeremy Vine was cycling in. As he progresses up the cycle lane, there's a hotel on the left-hand side. A vehicle then turns left across the cycle lane to go into the hotel car park, crossing a solid white line as it does so, directly in front of Jeremy Vine's path. So with that, let's take a look at the video itself. You can see that this is decidedly a cycle lane. It is demarcated with several barriers, several lines, and indeed these bollards all the way down. You'll notice this vehicle here on the left-hand side. You might argue that Jeremy Vine is in the blind spot, but that's by the by. Let's continue watching. This vehicle is going all the way up, almost at the same speed as Jeremy Vine, then accelerates accelerates. However, at the point at which it comes to turn into the hotel, you'll see that Jeremy Vine has just about caught up to this position. The vehicle does indicate, but then turns in seemingly without any knowledge that Jeremy Vine is there in the cycle lane at all. Now, of course, you might say that Jeremy Vine deliberately gets close to the vehicle to make a point, but after all, that is exactly the point, because vehicles should be taking note of cyclists in the cycle lane. So let's watch that again, and you can again make up your own mind. Now, whilst you can feel free to leave me your thoughts, comments and opinions in the box below, and you can debate that amongst yourselves for a while, I'm going to say that this is one of those situations that really shouldn't be debated in the first place. This is quite decidedly a cycle lane demarcated with a solid white line. Now, as Jeremy cycles down this cycle lane, there's a hotel on the left-hand side. You saw the vehicle cut across Jeremy's path, presumably to drive into the car park of the hotel driving across the solid white line as it does so. Now, of course, vehicles can cross a solid white line in specific circumstances. For example, if you're driving down a country lane, it's solid white lines, but there was a vehicle parked in front of you and the only way to get around that vehicle would be to cross that solid white line. That doesn't mean you can do so in the path of oncoming traffic. I'm sure you would agree. Likewise, if you're driving down any other ordinary road and there's a bus lane to the left-hand side with a solid white line, then you need to turn into a property that's on the other side of that bus lane. You might think to yourself, well, the only way to get into that property is to cross the solid white line, in which case you might drive across that solid white line. However, I can be reasonably assured that most of you are not going to drive directly in the path of an oncoming bus. Not least of which because you would know that that's against the law, against the highway code rules, but your vehicle is probably going to get totaled by the bus. Technical word there. However, the same ought to be true from the standpoint of principles when you're driving across a cycle lane. Now, I know many drivers don't like cycles and many cyclists don't like drivers, but guess what? I am both. I am both a driver and sometimes I'm a cyclist. And sure enough, when I'm a cyclist, I come across situations exactly like this where I've got near passes so close that I can touch the vehicle out to the side. My recommendation, by the way, is don't do that because if you get an angry driver, they either come back and revenge attack you and then somehow escape prison like the video I did on a story about just that situation some time ago, or worse still, they can pull a gun on you, which is a real case that I've talked about before. But coming back to the Vine case, this is a very clear open shut case. This driver should not have pulled across the cycle lane in front of the path of a cyclist. If you are to cross over the cycle lane and the solid white line to pull into a property that's on the side just like this vehicle was, 
you, the driver, have the duty, the obligation to check that that is clear before you do so. And if it's not clear, you must wait and any other vehicle behind you must wait for you as well. As I said, this is a situation that I really don't think should be a debate. So whilst you are free to debate that in the comments among yourselves, I'm going to make my position clear both on the law and on my opinion generally that this vehicle should not have done that. All I can say is that at least the driver apologised but also said that he didn't see him. So if he didn't see him, then perhaps he should have been driving more slowly and actually looked because he was crossing a cycle path. Ergo, there may well be cyclists on it. So that's my view for what it's worth. I know it's been heavily debated and there's lots of different opinions, but really, as I said, I don't think this is one that really ought to be debated. Drivers should be giving space to cyclists in general, but particularly if cutting across a cycle path they need to give way. So as I said, leave me your thoughts and comments in the box below. Remember to smash that like button and subscribe and I'll see you next time.